Hello, everybody, and welcome to your linear algebra review on the inverses of elementary matrices. My name is Jason, and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. Uh, now, as I mentioned in the previous video, which if you haven't seen, please check it out. Uh, there are three types of elementary matrices, and each one of them corresponds to uh, each of the elementary row operations. Right? So what we're going to do in this, in this video is um, provide three examples of elementary matrices, one from each of those categories, and show how to find its inverse. Um, now, they're all, they're all um, matrices, they're all invertible matrices. Um, so we can find the inverse using the traditional way, which is we take the matrix, augment with the identity, and reduce row echelon format. So we can find the inverse that way. Well, let's try to logic our way to the inverse instead. So let's start at example A. So this is the identity matrix, right? But let's see what's so different about it. It's not exactly the identity. What have we done? We've swapped the first row and the second row, right? Imagine swapping those back, you'd have the identity. So um, this, this one corresponds to, to swapping two rows. That's what this elementary matrix uh, corresponds to, specifically swapping row one with row three. So if you had any matrix, any three by three matrix, and you multiplied by this guy, the result, the solution, sorry, the, the result of that multiplication would be the matrix you started with, but with the first and third rows swapped, okay? Okay, so if we think about this, so what we did is we're swapping the first and third row. How could we undo that operation? That's what the inverse essentially does. It sort of undoes. Well, what if we just swap the rows back, right? If we just swap the rows back, we'd be back to where we started. So that, that's what the inverse would be. So in fact, the inverse of this matrix is itself. Because this, this is the matrix that swaps the first and third row. So if I swap the first and third row, and then I do that again, I'm back to where I started. And that's what inverses are, they, they undo each other. So in general, in general, um, if, you have, uh, if you have a matrix that swaps two rows, if you have an elementary matrix that swaps two rows, the inverse of it is itself. Well, that's cool. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go to the next example. So what's this? This is the identity. This is the identity matrix, except we have negative one sevenths in the second row position. So what would this do if we multiplied by our matrix? Well, this would multiply the second row by a non-zero constant. So that's, that's what this elementary row operation is corresponding to. Multiply um, a row by non-zero constant. And in this case, we're specifically taking the non-zero constant negative one seventh, negative one seventh and multiplying it by row two, okay? So that's what this one corresponds to. So how would we undo that? If we took our row two and multiplied by negative one seventh, how can we undo that operation? Well, what if we multiply by negative seven? So it'd be like taking row two, multiplying by negative one seventh, and then multiplying by negative seven, we've essentially multiplied row two by one, right? Negative one seventh times negative seven is one. So we've essentially not changed anything. So the inverse of this one, the inverse of this matrix is the same matrix, except instead of multiplying by negative one seventh, we multiply by negative seven. Because this sort of undoes that operation. We're essentially just multiplying by one now. We're not changing anything. So if, if you're multiplying a row by a non-zero constant, the inverse of that would be to multiply by the reciprocal of whatever that constant is. So if you multiply row one by 83, the inverse would be multiplying row one by one over 83. You have to just multiply by reciprocal. So this one, um, it's the same matrix. This one is you use the reciprocal. Recip <laughs> I'm a math major, okay? Not an English major. Reciprocal. Something like that. Um, okay, let's see what the, the final one is. So what are we doing in this case? So the first two rows are the identity. This second row, though, is the identity with this extra three here. So this corresponds to, to adding a multiple of one row to another. Okay, specifically, what are we doing? 
Well, remember, you think of the columns almost as rows. So this sort of corresponds to row, um, row one, and this corresponds to row three. So what we're doing is we're taking um, three times row one and adding it to one times row three. And this will, of course, be changing the third row because this is in the, the third row position. Okay? So we're going to be altering the third row by adding three times row one. Okay. Well, how would we undo this operation? So what we're doing is we're adding three times row one. So if we wanted to undo that, what would we have to do? Well, we would have to subtract three times row, row one. Correct? And how do we subtract three times row one? What, what does that elementary matrix look like? Well, it looks like the exact same thing, except with a negative three here instead of a positive three. So imagine you take your matrix, you add three times row one, and then you subtract three times row one. You've essentially done nothing. So you're, you're back to where you started. So the inverse of, in general, if you're adding a multiple of one row to another, the inverse would just be to negate what you just did. Negation or negate. So if you added 57 times row two, you would now subtract 57 times row two. So all you have to do is just, you change the sign of the thing that's not part of the identity. So like all of these elements are, are the same as the identity element. The only thing that's not is this three. So the inverse, all you do is just change the sign. If it's positive, make it negative. If it's negative, make it positive. That's what the inverse is. Okay. What'd you do up here? You, you looked at the one thing that wasn't part of the identity it's negative one seventh. And what'd you do? You just found the reciprocal, negative seven. What'd you do here for this first one? You didn't do anything. You left it as the same. So in general, if you have an elementary matrix of, of any of these three types, any of these three types, the way to find um, the inverse is, is in general, it looks like this. You either leave the matrix the same if it's swapping two rows, you find the reciprocal of, of the oddball, the weird number that's not part of the identity, if you're multiplying rows by non-zero constants, or you, you negate the oddball, you negate the one that's not part of the identity, um, if you're under the case of adding a multiple from row to another. All right, we'll be applying this in the next section when we talk about LU factorization. Uh, so thank you for joining me. As I mentioned at the beginning, I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. Um, so if you want to find out more about the free resources we offer to all four major ASU campuses and online, please check out tutoring.asu.edu. If you want more videos like this that go over specific concepts from your class, or maybe you want to see what upcoming review sessions we have for the exams in your class, go ahead and check out this link down there. Uh, thank you all for joining me, and I hope you have a fantastic day.